Live. James Bond actor Daniel Craig hosted the show with musical guest The Weeknd. It's been 25 years now since a Canadian singer named Shania Twain burst into our lives with the hit album The Woman in Me, which shot to number one on the country charts and eventually went platinum 12 times over. Shania's next album, Come On Over, was even bigger, setting records for a female artist and establishing Twain as one of the iconic comic musicians of her generation. But that polished performer, strutting across stages and through famous music videos, walked a long, hard path through poverty and pain to get there. Shania and I got together here in New York for a Sunday sit-down. Shania Twain's life has been a lot like a country song, filled with struggle, tragedy, and triumph. You don't get much farther from the bright lights of show business than the old mining town of Timmins in northern Ontario, where Twain grew up poor. That girl that was dreaming about just getting out of poverty, feeding myself, you know, being able to wear the right clothes for the right weather. I mean, I would wear rubber shoes all winter. Making it meant that I could live like the average person. I used to call them roast beef families because anybody that could afford to eat roast beef, and I could always smell it in the neighborhood, you know. I thought, that, that's what I want to be able to do someday. Twain began writing songs as a young girl, dreaming of her escape. By eight, she was performing at local bars. So you're in like third or fourth grade, popping out and doing a set at midnight bar? Well, the only way that I could get into the bar was after midnight. Because the official bar service stopped. I would be the after midnight entertainment. Wow. And then I'd have to get up for school. And what did your mom and dad say about their eight-year-old going to the bar at midnight? Well, they were taking me to the bar. That was, they were, my mother was managing me. This was her way of, of getting the exposure and getting me experience. Twain began to make a name for herself, and after graduating from high school, she moved to Nashville. But in 1987, as she was building a career, Twain got life-altering news from back home. Her parents both had been killed in a car accident. At 22, Twain returned to Ontario to raise her four siblings. There will never be another shock like that in my life. Raise her four siblings. There will never be another shock like that in my life. Losing both my parents at the same time. Suddenly, in a car accident. Suddenly like that. It was really the impossible tragedy to and trauma to, to cope with. Eventually, with her siblings on their feet, Twain returned to Nashville. Within months, she was signed to a record label and began collaborating with a music producer named Robert John Mutt Lang. My, I was like, whoa, like you're writing all this stuff yourself? And he was already really in love with my voice. He wanted to produce that voice, but we ended up writing everything, and I thought, that's all I've ever done ever since. Twain and Lang married in 1993 and had a son. Together, they wrote Twain's second album, The Woman in Me. It went on to sell 20 million copies worldwide and earned Twain a 1996 Grammy for Best Country Album. Man, I feel like a woman. Shania's next album was a musical earthquake. Come on over, featuring hits like You're Still the One. Man, I feel like a woman. And that don't impress me much. Selling album by a female musician of all time. It sold 40 million copies and won four Grammys, making Twain a bona fide crossover superstar. Where are you, big deal? But come on over with something else entirely. Where I imagine anywhere on earth he went, people knew who you were. I was blown away by the support by fans. I was exhausted at the same time. I'm now I'm working like triple time, more than I'd ever worked in my life, because now I'm touring. I'm doing videos every, like I said, every three months, a new video, a new single. I said, oh my God, I mean, how many, 
I mean, I like feel so grateful to have all these singles, but this has got to stop, and I can't give up. But they want to milk it. I mean, they want to milk it, and the fans want it. So when you asked me how I felt, I was not really feeling much. I was working, and I wasn't even appreciating the success. Then, as Shania sat on top of the music world, personal tragedy visited again. In 2008, she announced her divorce from Lang, and then she fell silent, literally. Shania thought she had lost her voice in the fatigue of a painful public split, but she learned she had contracted Lyme disease, which affected her vocal cords. I remember thinking and people saying, where's Shania Twain? It was devastating. I was very, very, very sad about it, to the point where I just, I had no other, I felt I had no other choice but to just accept it. You would accept it? And I would it. never sing again. You must have been in mourning in some way. This I'm thing that has been my life for all my life is gone. I was mourning. I was mourning the expression of my voice. Twain's friend, Swiss businessman Frederic Thibault, helped her through surgery and a long rehabilitation. They married in 2011. Do you remember hearing your voice the first time you sang after the surgery? You felt like I'm back. I can do this again? It was, it was little by little because the surgery is quite, it's invasive. It's given me more room to fight, mm -hmm. to be honest. I have gravel. You can hear it when I'm speaking. You like it? I think it's kind of sexy. I don't, I mean, it's there. I'm never going to have my own voice again. I've found a new voice and I like it. Today, the 54-year-old Twain is flexing that new voice at her Las Vegas residency called Let's Go. So what will your fans see or think about coming to Vegas to see you again? What will they see in the show? It's a, a less formal environment, first of all. So it's a very stand-up, you know, get up your seat kind of room. It's a dream show. I feel very privileged. This is the reward um, that I, you know, I see it as a reward. A reward for the success she has earned on the long road from Timmins, Ontario. I do every day look back at where I came from and where I am and can't believe it. And then I look at all the hurdles and, and then that's a whole other level of belief or disbelief that I've made it through them and over them and everything that I've experienced has brought me to where I am and it's a good place. And this week Shania's Let's Go residency at Planet Hollywood Sappos Theater in Las Vegas was extended through the end of the year. Shania also, by the way, starring in a new movie called I Still Believe that hits theaters on Friday with early IMAX screenings starting on Wednesday. Our big thanks to Smash Studios here in New York for hosting our conversation. To hear Shania talk about her early musical inspirations from Dolly Parton to Gladys Knight, check out our web extras at today.com slash Sunday. And don't forget to subscribe to the Sunday Sit Down Podcast to hear the full-length interview with Shania Twain. There's so much to that story, and you can find it on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get yours. And next week, we will revisit one of our favorite Sunday sit-downs ever with actor Sterling K. Brown on the breakout success of the NBC show This Is Us, his starring role in the new season of The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, and why, early in his career, his own mother could barely stand to watch him on TV. Sterling K. Brown next week on Sunday today. And coming up this morning, Morgan and I will answer your questions. Use the hashtag Sunday Today on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram, and we'll get to as many as we can when we read our Sunday mail at the end of the show. But first, let's get a quick check of your local weather. Now, your Super Doppler 10 forecast with meteorologist Casey Laheka. Well, good morning. We'll have plenty of sunshine for today. Really a nice day ahead, pretty much on track for average. We'll be in the mid to upper 50s. And then by Monday, a few clouds will be moving in, but even warmer, upper 60s. So well above average, close to 70 degrees by Tuesday. There could be some rain moving in, though, later into the day on Tuesday. And on and off scattered showers for Wednesday. You can always find the latest forecast at wavy.com. Next on Sunday today, the search for affordable, healthy food, long a problem in the food deserts of big cities, now comes to rural America.